let's let's uh, let's now go into uh, two studies, uh, the Ascent study. Uh, basically, uh, diabetes is a significant risk factor that we are told equal to have coronary artery disease. So, and the data on platelet inhibitors and specifically on aspirin has been very controversial in the literature and we don't have to go into it. But uh, in this study, the ASCENT study, it was decided to address the issue. This is a study based in the United, uh, in the United Kingdom. And basically the first one I want to present is the use of aspirin for primary prevention in persons with diabetes mellitus. Uh, Louis Bowman and Jane Armitage from Oxford were leading the study. And just let me make a long story short. Basically, we are talking about 15,000 participants who actually underwent randomization of aspirin 100 milligrams uh, versus matching placebo with a follow-up, I believe, for seven years. And they look at all possibilities, serious vascular events, and they look at bleeding. This was important. Now, in a huge study like this, any little difference makes a p-value, which is the question is what is the impact? In fact, when you look at the vascular events, the, uh, it was 8.5% in the aspirin group versus 9.6% in the placebo group. And they call this significant value 0 0.01, but you know, we have so many people and it's just one point. On the other hand, the bleeding is 3.2% mm -hmm. in the placebo group, 4.1% in the aspirin with a wash. So you end up really that the absolute benefit in one hand uh, is detrimental in the other. And, and, and this leads to an interesting question. And maybe I'm going to ask you actually, because we have learned about bleeding from the surgical side. We have learned that bleeding is important over the last 10 years with so much in preventing ischemic events. And many of the studies actually came from, the, from you. I think this is a clear example of modern look at events, you know, bleeding versus ischemia. And, and actually, at the very end, it seems you should not give aspirin to a patient who has diabetes without evidence of cardiovascular disease. I'd like just you to comment about the history of bleeding and surgery. Yeah, the, the um, impact long-term, there is long-term impact for bleeding uh, complications of surgery. Um, and uh, a study like this is, is a little bit difficult to interpret because you have to weigh the bleeding uh, complications, the, what those mean to the patients versus the reductions in the cardiovascular outcomes, what those, how those are weighted by the patients. And um, it's a, a little bit analogous to a bioprosthetic or a mechanical aortic valve. You're, you're basically trying to ask the patient to weigh what's more important to you, a reoperation or increased bleeding risk in the future. And that's difficult. It's, was major bleeding though. Yeah, it major really bleeding. Precise in the way they describe it. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's, a, um, it's a real endpoint that has uh, um, uh, real consequences for the patients. And uh, therefore, I, I'm, to be honest, is, being a surgeon, I'm glad because I don't have to weigh in on this. But this is a real conundrum from my point of view. Yeah. Irina, what would you think? Um, I think that um, um, this observation that aspirin is great for uh, primary prevention uh, came, first of all, from appreciation that it works wonders in secondary prevention. And these results were extrapolated. And then uh, evidence and primary prevention, we are referring to different populations, higher risk, probably, um, different uh, management of cardiovascular risk factors, which has now improved. And maybe that is why the overall input impact of aspirin, adding aspirin on top of better yeah, cardiovascular risk management, uh, offset is ob its obvious positive, uh, positive effect. And I think it's very confusing for the, for the physicians who obviously would use for secondary prevention. 
who also learned about various reports that aspirin is useful, for example, to combat or to yeah. prevent colon cancer, bowel cancer. So, in general, it is good for you and intuitively it's good because it thins your blood. But, unfortunately, we don't get this good evidence and it's confusing. But I think that I don't know whether it's going to change our practice. I think that many physicians like to prescribe aspirin. Yes, but you know you bleed. It is interesting, doctors like aspirin. In my experience, yeah. doctors they... really use aspirin yeah. for primary prevention. But you know you see bleeding, gastrointestinal bleeding. I mean, it's to prevent ischemic events, but there is the problem. Can you add any comment about this study? I, I, I would make a difference between uh, you know, a patient with uh, con uh, controlled diabetes and uh, a, a patient with uncontrolled diabetes, okay. hypertension, is a good point. current smoking, yeah. Uh, and, and these patients do not bear the same risk, and, and we, we should be careful before saying there is absolutely no need for aspirin. This was very well patients. controlled diabetes. Yes. Good you, point. Yeah. You, could, a, you could have, you, could, you, you can see healthy diabetics. It's a very good point. Yeah, I guess I have a much more rosy interpretation of the trial than, than, than perhaps the, the rest of you do, and even more so than the uh, investigators uh, doing the trial and writing it up and presenting it. They presented it as a negative trial. Yes, yeah. Honestly, if I were presenting it, I would have presented it as a positive trial. I mean, it met its primary endpoint. You're right, the absolute risk reduction was not large, but it's a primary prevention population. Even among diabetics, the event rates aren't so, so high. So it's a positive trial. Now, there's bleeding, but it, we're comparing irreversible events, MI, ischemic stroke, cardiovascular death, to reversible ones, transfusions. It wasn't a significant excess yeah. in fatal or intracranial bleeding. So I guess my position would be it's an option to use this in primary prevention diabetics? Would I use it in everybody? No, I would only use it in people that I thought were at low risk of bleeding. And the other thing I might consider, not totally evidence-based, is proton pump inhibition. I mean, I think that's a question that's really ripe for investigation. Maybe yeah. if there were a concomitant proton pump inhibitor that largely attenuates the GI bleeding hazard of aspirin, and then you've got a much better net clinical benefit. Yeah. We'll talk in a moment, but uh, I must say to you that um, it's interesting, you said you feel positive, I feel negative, and let me tell you why. Because the incidence rate goes from 8.5% to 9.6% in a seven-year follow-up. I, I would not consider this a positive trial. Yeah, it's a p-value, it's positive, but 15,000 people, you know, that you're dealing with, so... Well, I don't think it's something that I would say use it in every diabetic No, no, but then I understand it. But I think among yeah. the universe of diabetes, it's a lot of patients, and some are higher risk primary prevention, some are low risk. And even the terms primary and secondary prevention, they're a bit artificial. Yeah, I, I mean, agree. what if you have a diabetic patient, they excluded known atherosclerosis, but let's say you know that there's a 50% carotid stenosis, yeah. asymptomatic. Is that primary mm -hmm. prevention? Is it secondary prevention? What if someone does a coronary calcium score? Yeah. You know, then what if that's 800? Is that primary prevention in the diabetic, secondary prevention. So I just think there's now latitude with physician discretion to selectively prescribe aspirin for primary prevention in the diabetic patient. I've never believed in patients just starting it on their own for primary prevention and yeah. taking it. That, I think, is an error. And this trial and one that you'll soon discuss corroborate that. But with physician input, careful discussion with patients, I think okay, it's reasonable so, to consider. So the, the basic summary by listening to you is that uh, this is a complex field, whether the diabetes is well controlled or not, whether there is subclinical disease or not, and uh, there, is, there is ischemia less, a little bit less with the, with the aspirin, so it may be debatable, but uh, just uh, one point, and I only want to make one point, is that